Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to do the top five Chanel perfumes for the month of January. I've generated uh, this uh, kind of cold, uh, wintry, but cozy, Chanel-esque type of interior design. Well, I, bubbles, you know, AI generated this little green screen moment, feeling it, you know, feeling the warmth, contrasting the cold. Let's see how this selection looks like. Subscribe to my channel first and foremost, if you haven't already, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together. Thank you to my members and patrons already pledged. Also, push the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. The first one, I don't know why, but I need the smell of kind of pineapple-y paper. Hey, <laughs> IYKYK. -Y -K. Not necessarily the pineapple-y bit, but the paper bit, really, really important. Maybe because this is the time of year, also in December, but for me, mostly in January, when you're writing notes, paper notes, to thank people for the gifts that they've given you, uh, you know, during the holiday season, or if you're sending out notes to friends, family, I mean, it's very old school, I know, but some people still do it. And you're writing down, uh, you know, Happy New Year, wishing you all the best for 2024. Like those beautiful cardboardy, papery, thick paper, high quality paper cards <clears throat> that you use. And then you utilize also like really, really special pens to write the cards. That kind of smell of paper is, is something that I really, really enjoy in January. And there is a Chanel perfume, believe it or not, that to me has a papery smell to it. And that would be Chance, the OG Chance. We're not talking any of the flankers. We're not talking, um, we're not talking Au Tendre, Au Fraiche, Au Vive. We're talking Chance, Chance. And I do really, really enjoy it in the Extrait. Unfortunately, it appears to be discontinued. Really, really sad to hear that. But I also really love it in the Eau de Toilette. <clears throat> where that papery accord really, really amps up to the next level. You know, I do believe that Sean's from the, what Chanel markets as female fragrance offerings, you know, in my book, perfumes know no gender, so wear whatever smells good to you on you. But... Of all their female targeted fragrances, minus Cristal and number 19, which are like really historic, you know, we're talking 70s, um, Chance is kind of the least, I don't want to say sold or pushed, I don't know, really know their numbers in terms of sales, but the flankers, Autendre, I have a sneaky suspicion Autendre is selling more than the OG Chance, but... It kind of is underrated. That's what I'm trying to say. I think Chance is the one that, uh, the OG Chance is the one that deserves rediscovering. You know what I mean? And the Eau de Toilette is really, really beautiful. It's kind of like a forgotten fragrance. You know, it's very much isolated and segregated to something that we don't know what it is. You know, <laughs> it's like people don't really gravitate towards Chance. Uh, in my humble opinion, I don't smell it around very much in the early 2000s. I smelled it everywhere. Well, late 2000s. It was all over the place. Everybody would wear shots, like, in, in, you know, public transportation, offices, schools, wherever you would go, shots you would smell. Now, no. So there's something wintry about this as well. You know, that kind of sleeping hibernation type of vibe and mood that you might be in like bears <laughs> funny but that's the vibe you know and chance is kind of like that hibernating chanel perfume it's it's waiting to for its own spring to arrive again so that it kind of becomes popular again i think coco mademoiselle um also because you know, promotion-wise, wise, it was really pushed by Chanel extremely. So, 
their ad campaigns for Coco Mademoiselle are huge, hence facilitating and helping Coco Mademoiselle to become really a Chanel classic, up there together with Chanel Number no. 5. Chance did not get that representation by Chanel. Uh, maybe the sales numbers weren't that good, like Coco Mademoiselle's. So Chance got a little bit of a, you know, all those flankers being released and they kind of overshadowed the OG. Very, very rare. Technically, if you think about it, Coco Mademoiselle, because of the name Coco, ha is a flanker of Coco, even though it's its own perfume. But if we were to see Coco Mademoiselle as a flanker of Coco, then we would say that Coco Mademoiselle definitely overshadowed Coco. But we'll get to that a little bit later on in this video. But for now, Chance, it kind of feels like winter to me because it's hibernating, it's sleeping, it's a sleeping beauty. It's waiting to be discovered by its prints, Chanel's marketing, basically, in the springtime so that it kind of gets a boost again, you know, and sales uh, skyrocket. This is a classic Chanel perfume to me, although I do feel like for the masses, it's not. I think it's something that is quite... It didn't penetrate into, you know, into timelessness like, like uh, Coco Mademoiselle. Speaking of Coco Mademoiselle, my number two on the list for January, you see. Now, uh, for Coco Mademoiselle, I have chosen the Extrait. People are telling me that they're noticing that in, that in their regions, wherever it may be around the world, that the Parfum and the Extrait spray version is not uh, available anymore. So I don't know if it's discontinued or not in this little spray cartridge version. I hope it's not discontinued because it's definitely my favorite version of Coco Mademoiselle. But anyway, it's giving me hope for the future. I know it's winter, but it's a new year and I wish that good times weren't ahead of us. I wish that something nice would happen to us this year. Last year was a mess. So kind of Coco Mademoiselle, I'm using it this month to initiate some form of positive vibe for the future. It's kind of wishful thinking, I guess. But also Coco Mademoiselle with it with its sweet, chewy, groundbreaking formula of the early 2000s really delivers in a very, very, very special way. Slightly nostalgic, Y2K era, but like I said in my other videos, Coco Mademoiselle really, also thanks to brand marketing by Chanel, has earned its position as a classic Chanel perfume. Now, re if I'm really, really, really kind of sniffing into it and being honest, Coco Mademoiselle is less and less in my memory segregated to the Y2K era. And more and more, as I smell Coco Mademoiselle, it, it's its own thing. It has boxed its way like a bull through time and through all other perfume releases and through all other perfume trends and, you know, fashion, trendy vibes, certain smells, you know, ouds were the rage. Thank goodness they're al it's almost over with the ouds. Aroma chemicals then, you know, molecule one off. Oh, listen, listen, Linda, this one had its moment in time as a sweet chuli, and that was very, very Y2K. And then for a certain period of time, it became a little bit obsolete and it smelled dated. But Chanel kept pushing it and they kept pushing the advertisement for it. And they kept, you know, changing the face for the ad campaign. You know, Kira Knightley was for the longest time uh, the face of, of Coco Mademoiselle. And, and somehow, somewhere down the line, and I want to say not a long time ago, Maybe for me, the click happened right before the pandemic or during. That's when something clicked in me and I, and I kind of sniffed one day Coco Mademoiselle again. You know, I, I, of course, I have 
all the iterations of Coco Mademoiselle from the from the Eau de Toilette to the Eau de Parfum to the Intense to the Eau Privé to the Low. Yes, there's also a Low version, limited edition of Coco Mademoiselle. But I have all of them, right? And I've had them for many years. Respect respectively, as they were being released, I was purchasing them. And um, somewhere down the line, maybe 2021, 2022, so not a long time ago, it just one day clicked for me and I was like, oh, you know what? It's not dated anymore. It has kind of withstood the test of time. It's been so stubborn, just like Coco Mademoiselle when she was younger, right? It's kind of targeted to... The idea is like, oh, a younger Chanel, you know. Um, even though then they released Gabrielle, and that's supposed to be the young Chanel, but truth be told, Coco Mademoiselle, to me, is the young Chanel. If we're thinking about her biography. Smell-wise, right? I want to say it just started smelling classic Chanel. 2021 2022 and since then it's it's just growing and growing and growing on me that's why i'm also kind of sad uh that in some countries people are saying that the little spray version is no longer in distribution breaks my heart because this thing is amazing best concentration and formulation of coco mademoiselle for me is the parfum and i love to have it as a spray you know dabber yeah also not bad, but uh, I just love, when you spray it, the molecules just seem to work better with my skin, with the extra. What can I say? And in winter, it's giving me that hope of a beautiful spring to come. So it's kind of like an investment for my emotional future, wearing Coco Mademoiselle in January, because it feels like January. It feels like new beginnings. It feels like... Yes, I'm tired from last year, but I can still make a change and make a difference in my life and maybe in the lives of others as well. Who knows? But like I say, always perfumes are a personal thing. You're wearing them for yourself first and foremost, not for others. And if others around you that you like kind of come close to you and, and you allow them to enter your life, well, then that's, you know, it's like a gift you're making them, allowing them to come really close to you, smell you, you know, smell your skin the perfume that you're wearing. It's a very intimate thing. I don't really visualize and see perfumes as, oh, let me spray it on because I want the whole world out there to notice me. Mm. I don't think that way with perfumes. Although some perfumes are compliment getters, but I do have a whole video about the compliment getter perfumes and what that actually really means. So you can go check out that video as well in my Essentially Deco Perfume channel. So that's Coco Mademoiselle. Now we also mentioned Coco, right? And of course, Coco is also on the list. Uh, Coco being the fingerprint magnet in this monolith 60 ml eau de parfum bottle uh, container. Oh, man. So, like I said, well, this one was released in the 80s, and it is an 80s powerhouse perfume, shoulder pads, a dynasty. If you know the TV show Dynasty, this was this is it. Dallas, late years Dallas, if you know the TV show, this is it. And so 80s, second half of the 80s sees, witnesses the launch of Coco. And then in the Y2K era, in the 2000s, we have Coco Mademoiselle. Technically, it's its own perfume, but you see Coco, Coco Mademoiselle, Coco Noir. Coco Noir is definitely a flanker of Coco. Coco Mademoiselle, debatable. You know, it was launched as a flanker of Coco, but it's become so much more powerful and popular than Coco that um, can we still call Coco Mademoiselle a flanker of Coco? I personally think not. I think Coco Mademoiselle is really in its own right, its own perfume. The fact that it overshadowed Coco is a little bit sad because Coco is and forever will remain that we're not calling them Orientals anymore. It's not politically correct. So I have, and people usually now call them Amber Accord fragrances. I don't, I don't like that term. So I call them Byzantine or Baroque perfumes. 
the ex orientals and boy oh boy is this a byzantine perfume okay this is warm but also powdery cool yes it has the best of the 80s the decadence the opulence but you need that to warm up in the in the cold of winter now i love this monolith very kind of art deco style but also monolith very 2001 Space Odyssey, very Stanley Kubrick, but very Chanel. So streamlined. I love this 60 mil refillable container, which unfortunately has been discontinued. I mean, Chanel, <laughs> they keep cutting out these beautiful pieces, beautiful perfumes, the, the bath and body range for most of them. The soaps are also gone for most of them. Coco's soap is also gone. They, they still do make Coco Eau de Parfum, Eau de Toilette, and the Extrait, but they no longer make the variations of the bottles, you know what I mean? So now you get it in that classic glass bottle, which is also really beautiful, just like Chanel Number no. 5. But you don't get this special version, you know, of Coco that is made only for Coco. You know, only Coco had this particular size and proportions. Yes, Chanel Number no. 5 also had a refillable black container, but it wasn't made this way. It was more rounded off, you know, kind of curvaceous on the on the on the tops. It wasn't like this flat. But anyway, we digress. Um, so whichever container you find, bottle or plastic container that has a glass bottle inside, it's just beautiful. It is a dry rose with a musky, ambery, aldehydic civity uh kind of clove cinnamony accord in it and it's just really really in the 80s the formula was a little bit more intense so obviously in the 80s you got a whole other level of of intensity than you do today regardless regardless Still, in today's formulation, yes, it's going to be a little bit watered down. It's still amazing, though. Even in its watered-down version. You know, bear in mind that in the 80s, uh, if you happen to stumble upon a Vogue magazine from the 80s, and you kind of go through the pages of Vogue, you're going to notice that every, let's say, 10 pages or so, sometimes even every six pages or so, there would be an ad for cigarettes. C cigarettes were all the rage. They're bad for your health. Do not smoke, people, okay? I'm just taking a historical context here, so what I'm saying here is not promotion in any way for the cigarette companies. I would never... But what it is, is a fact. These cigarette companies would buy a ton of pages out of these fashion magazines. And it was trendy to smoke. And everybody was smoking everywhere. You could even smoke on air flights and airplanes, in the club, in the office, at work. So you can imagine how a tobacco smoke-infested area room whatever room that may be in some cases even in the doctor's office in the waiting room you could smoke you can you can imagine how perfume is needed to be stronger to kind of cover up that smell and they had to coexist in a world that was much more odor heavy and coco comes in a time where there's a lot of advertisements for cigarettes, everybody's smoking, smoking is like super popular, it's trendy. So of course, Coco, the, the first formulation of Coco was very, very strong. But it needed also to be strong because it needed to really survive within that type of lifestyle that people were leading, you see. So now when we fast forward to today, where nobody's smoking anymore. You're not allowed to smoke anywhere anymore. Everything, you know what I mean? Like, there's no more cigarette advertisements in Vogue <laughs> and, and other magazines. Now we're, we've come to a point where the perfume doesn't need to be that intense anymore. 
it has less other odors to combat. Plus, people beca became more and more sensitive to smells. In the office, people will complain to your bosses. They're going to go to HR and say, hey, my colleague over there in that office or at that desk, oof, you know, that perfume is really causing me headaches. And then they're going to talk to you and tell you, hey, can you tone it down a bit? Been there, done that, honey. So obviously, Coco had to take off the shoulder pads and adapt to today's day and age. Yes, there are also IFRA regulations and other shenanigans going on in the background. But all this to say what? A lot of people complain about Chanel perfume quality nowadays saying, oh, you know, they're being toned down, watered down, they want to save money. I don't think that they're really saving money on the ingredients that they're using. I, I think Chanel perfume ingredients are still top notch. That amount of money that I believe they would be saving if they were really watering down the perfumes is abysmal compared to the mar the profit margins. You know, where I think they're really cutting production costs is by shrinking the range of the Bath & Body products that they're offering per perfume, and in some cases, deleting the entire perfume altogether, you know, um, not fully a perfume, but one of its concentrations or concentrations of flankers. So Coco to me is a beautiful, warm, fuzzy memory of the past and nothing better to get you through a cold winter than a beautiful warm, cozy memory of the past. It just gives you hope. That's why I love Coco. And also, it's beautiful in the evenings before you go to bed, just to cuddle up in bed or with snuggle up with someone. You know, I'm not saying go out on dates in the cold with the blizzards or whatever. But if you're going to go out on a date, also gorgeous to wear this to a restaurant, but also just at home with yourself, you know, to go to bed with Coco. Oh. <laughs> to go to bed with Coco, no pun intended. So delicious. But speaking of perfumes that have been discontinued, right, from Chanel or flankers thereof or concentrations thereof, here's one that has not been discontinued yet, but one of its concentrations has. This is my number four uh, for the month of January. It is Allure Sensuelle, the sensual version of Allure. This is the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette has been discontinued. The Parfum has also been discontinued, the Extrait version of Allure Sensuel. So, as you can see, Chanel is, they're still producing the Eau de Parfum. Another interesting take on patchouli. We've had Coco Mademoiselle with the patchouli. We got more patchouli coming up with Allure Sensuel. Very warm, very warm and at the same time, humid, moist patchouli, very elegant patchouli, beautiful for winter, beautiful for January. This one is like walking through, <laughs> an artificial forest. Now, Allure is a flanker of, uh, Allure Sensuel is a flanker of Allure. So Allure is still in production, um, they're quite different because, you know, Allure is, is, a, is a softer, it's a 90s perfume, softer take on a Chanel fragrance in general. It's a delicate fragrance. Allure Sensuel is more aggressive. It's more screechy. And it has a very distinct patchouli character. Um, combined with Chanel's al aldehydes and a you know, smidge of vanilla, this thing goes in a direction where um, I personally believe this is really, really good for the office, you know, for, for work in January. It, um, it has a certain distinct and distinctive focus. It's sharp in a way that only really good patchoulis can be. It's sharp in a good way and it, it kind of it's interesting for the office and it's a it's a chameleon in a way because the way it smells it does smell of 
the time it was released, what was it, late 90s, early 2000s, but it, it also kind of smells of the future. So you you could technically say it has it has something conservative about it, but also something edgy. So it it is interesting for The Office because at work, whenever I wore this, I was usually perceived as forward thinking, but with the feet well grounded on the floor, which is the best thing you could actually get, right, from a work environment, from your colleagues, the respect of your colleagues, the respect of your managers or whatever, or bosses, whatever have you. So it's a very, very interesting perfume. And like I often say, you know, if you choose the right perfume for the right situation in life, the perfume will actually do part of the job for you. If you choose the right perfume, a perfume can take a bit of the burden off of your shoulders of delivering a certain type of convincing somebody of something, uh, delivering a presentation of an idea that you have, of a product that you have. The right perfume can set the mood and the tone, and it can work in your favor. It can also work against you if you choose the wrong one for that particular instance. I'm not saying that every perfume is always bad or good, but some perfumes that are great for some occasions might not be so good for other occasions. You see, in January, I think Allure Sensuelle Eau de Parfum is really, really good for office attires. It, it, it helps you come through January at work with a little bit more ease because this one takes tiny little bit of, of that stress off your shoulders in terms of how you're perceived by others. This is just my humble opinion. Obviously, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. So, and it is my opinion that this is gorgeous in January. It just has the, has the right mix of past and future, well-grounded on the floor, feet well-grounded on the floor, while at the same time forward thinking. I mean, every basically job wants that from their workers. And of course, they don't want you to be complicated. They don't want you to complain if corporate ever asks you. So give us feedback about your work environment. They don't really want to hear you say, oh, you know, this could be done better. No, they say they want to hear everything, but that's just more complications for them. What they want you to say is everything is great. Everything's fantastic, amazing, even if it's not. The last, but not least, on this list, the number five, another patchouli bomb, and we had to go a little bit expensive. It would be Coromandel. I have here the Eau de Toilette, but I also adore the Extra, and I also really like the Eau de Parfum, so... Choose whichever version you want, but right now, ugh, it's that white chocolate in here for me. <laughs> in the first, first versions, first batches of the Eau de Toilette from the late 2000s, ugh, it's like a masterpiece miracle. <sighs> it's almost like Coromandel is, we're playing in the same ballpark as Coco and Coco Mademoiselle. It's kind of like Coco, but Coco is Prêt-à-Porter and Coromandel is Haute Couture. That's the difference. There's a, a deeper heft. There's a nuance there. There's more darkness in it than in Coco. There is more heft and it's more gothic. Coromandel has the name because of the Coromandel panels in 31 Rue Cambon, the lacquered Coromandel panels Coco got from China. But this one, I mean, look at the lion. I'm wearing a Chanel necklace. Uh, this is also a typical lion we find in 31 Rue Cambon. It's kind of Coco's signature. Obviously, she was a Leo. Coromandel, to me, is like a modern version of Coco. 
it's not like they have a lot of stuff in common, Coco and Coromandel. Coco, you know, is a different composition, and Coromandel does go into that Sheldrake, Polge <laughs> type of vibe with a specific edge. And the patchouli makes a huge difference, you know. Um, but there's such a poetic, lacquered darkness in Coromandel that it just befits winter, really. Uh, that cocooning yourself in thoughts about, okay, what's the future going to bring, you know, this year's beginning. I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions here. I'm talking about we as human beings, as the year begins, we we have thoughts, you know, and the tax season is coming <laughs> and you got to do that as well. And you got to figure stuff out strategically. Emotionally, you're also kind of in a weird position for everybody who's single. You get more needy for cuddles and human touch because you feel more lonely you know, there's a lot of things that go through one's head and um, psychologically there can be a lot of repercussions to that in hot weather and then in cold weather, a totally different story. January being the first month of the year and kind of, well, February can be colder than January usually, right? February can be really screechy cold, but January can have, you know, January is more representative of the winter of the soul you know february is more kind of a reawakening it's like kind of shaking up that ice slowly but january is the winter of the soul while february is more the winter of the body and this is more of a soul fragrance you know coromandel goes really deep and that patchouli is very natural and very wet and soily and earthy so it's kind of like a reconnection with Mother Nature when you smell this thing, even though, of course, it's a aldehydic synthetic fragrance, but it's woven like a very, very sophisticated Chanel tweed with a lot of black, gold, and, and beige threads. I mean, kind of a little bit like this jacket here. This is kind of the vibe. I don't know if you can see. There's a little bit of blue in here as well. Gold, beige, black, and then... It's wet and warm at the same time, so there's an animalic accord in here that also makes you feel quite physical, you know. It's visceral. It's a very visceral, emotional fragrance. So, it is beautiful and alluring. It's not the easiest one to wear because it can be very overpowering if you overspray it. So I always say downplay this one. Go very, very easy on this juice and begin at night before you go to bed, just for yourself. Feel it for yourself. How does it feel for yourself? How does it deliver the vibe to you? And then, you know, if you're liking it, then you can go deeper into it and then start wearing it during the daytime. You know, I would not necessarily wear this to the office in January because it can it just keeps blooming and blooming and becomes heavier and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just like at a certain point, it's like people in the office might suffocate. So if you are really, really in love with this one and you want to wear it to the office, I would say just spray it behind the knee and don't wear a short skirt or whatever to work, like wear something long so that the knees are covered so that they're not like completely exposed and kind of emanating the smell. But this is not something you're going to spray in this area in the office in winter because it's really intense. Even the current formulation of it in the Eau de Parfum. Mm. Now, those will be my top five January Chanel perfumes. I hope you've enjoyed the list. Thumb up the video. Let me know your favorite Chanel perfumes for the month of January. Subscribe and uh, what can I say? Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Take care, guys. Bye. Mwah.